The Kokoda Track campaign was a part of the Pacific Theatre of World War II. The campaign consisted of multiple battles fought between July and November 1942 in what was then the Australian Territory of Papua. It was primarily a land battle between the Japanese South Seas Detachment and the Australian and Papuan Land Forces. The Japanese wanted to seize Port Moresby by an overland advance from the north coast, following the Kokoda Track over the mountains of the Owen Stanley Range as a part of a strategy to isolate Australia from the United States. But before we get into the specifics of the campaign, we need some context. Before the bombing of Pearl Harbour, most Australian forces were spread thin fighting overseas in other theatres of the war, such as in North Africa. Therefore, the main forces that were protecting the Australian mainland were militia members, also known as the Army Reserve. Many of them were conscripted and they were seen as untrained and inexperienced, yet these militia forces were expected to make up the first line of defence against the Japanese invasion of Australia. Due to Japan's alignment towards the Axis powers, the Australian government was deeply concerned about the prospect of invasion if they ever joined the war. But until late 1941, this would have been seen as unlikely. Japanese forces were still tied down in China, so opening a two-front war against the British and Americans wouldn't have been a good idea. However, Japan really wanted the resources that were located in the colonial territories of Southeast Asia. Once Japan did join the war, they blitzed through large parts of Southeast Asia to the north coast of New Guinea over the course of six months, taking the Allies, and especially the British, by complete surprise. Commonwealth forces suffered an especially devastating defeat in Singapore, where they lost 85,000 soldiers compared to only 5,000 Japanese losses. This preceded a clash between the British and Australian governments. When it was becoming clear that Britain couldn't guarantee Australia's safety from a Japanese invasion, the Australian government went to ask for help from the United States. This annoyed British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who denounced Australian Prime Minister John Curtin for insulting the war effort. Curtin had ordered AIF veteran forces to be returned to Australia in preparation for the defence of the homeland. However, Churchill wanted these troops to be redirected to Burma, so the Japanese advance there could be stopped before it reached India. Curtin demanded that the troops be returned to Australia, so in response, Churchill secretly ordered the ships carrying the troops to set course for Burma instead of heading to Australia. Curtin was outraged when he found out, and once again demanded the ships come to Australia. Churchill eventually backed down and allowed for the troops to return to Australia. None of this infighting was helped by a report that was published by British Command, which effectively blamed Australian cowardice and desertions for the loss at Singapore. This ignored the fact that Australian forces suffered 73% of the losses, even though they were only 13% of the total Commonwealth force. It seemed that Britain didn't think highly of Australia at this point. If the opinions of Allied High Command were to change, then they'd have to prove themselves in the Pacific, and soon, they would get their chance. Japanese forces landed and established beachheads near Gono and Buna on 21st of July 1942. They quickly advanced to capture Kokoda and a strategically vital airfield on the 29th of July. Australian militia forces had been deployed to the area in order to counter the Japanese advance. They trekked for eight days across the Kokoda track to meet the Japanese, but they were unable to take the village of Kokoda and its airfield. Despite reinforcement from the AIF soldiers returning from North Africa, the Australians continued to fall back in a fighting retreat. The veteran 2nd AIF 21st Brigade narrowly avoided capture in the Battle of Mission Ridge from the 68th of September. More than a week earlier, the Japanese Special Naval Landing Force had attempted to take Milne Bay, so they could advance on Port Moresby. But the Japanese had severely underestimated the size of the predominantly Australian garrison there. This led to one of Japan's first major defeats in the Pacific Campaign, where Australian and American air and ground forces repelled the invasion attempt, ending any Japanese hopes of a naval invasion of Port Moresby. This meant that the only way they could take the port was to defeat the Australians on the Kokoda Track. Throughout the campaign, Japanese forces made heavy use of the jungle environment, concealing themselves to launch ambushes on Allied forces. Australian reinforcement was hampered by the logistical problems of supporting a force in the isolated, mountainous, jungle terrain of New Guinea. It was difficult for Australian and American forces to be resupplied by air, and Australian command realised that heavy machine guns and medium mortars were, well, too heavy to carry. Some infantry weapons, such as the American Thompson submachine gun, while effective in close quarters, were notoriously unreliable in the Papuan jungle, since they required constant cleaning to prevent jamming. Something that's harder to do when the terrain you're fighting in looks like this. 
Without artillery, mortars or medium machine guns, the Australian space and opponent are equipped with mountain guns and light howitzers that have been carried into the mountains. And East proved to be a decisive advantage in battle. In the Battle of Urubaiwa from the 13th to 16th September, the 25th Brigade fought their enemy to a standstill, but ended up ceding the field to the Japanese, withdrawing to a meter reach. Retreats like this were heavily criticised by General Douglas MacArthur and General Sir Thomas Blamey. Both generals considered the retreats of Australian forces cowardly, despite the reality on the front line. The Japanese advanced to within sight of Port Moresby, but ended up withdrawing on the 26th of September. They had outrun their supply line, and had been ordered to withdraw in consequence of reverses suffered at Guadalcanal. The Australians had been trying to stall the Japanese in any way they could, and now it appeared that their strategy had finally paid off. The Australians began a counterattack to pursue the Japanese back to the beachheads that they originally landed at. They encountered strong opposition from well-prepared positions around Templeton's Crossing and Eora Village from the 11th to the 28th of October. Following the unopposed recapture of Kokoda, a major battle was fought around Ovi and Gorari from the 4th to 11th of November, resulting in the victory for the Australians. By the 16th of November, two brigades of the Australian 7th Division had crossed the Kamusi River at Wairobi and advanced on the Japanese beachheads in a joint Australian and American operation. The Japanese forces at Bunagona held out until the 22nd of January 1943. When all was said and done, the Allies had managed not only to put an end to Japan's southward advance, they gave the Japanese their first big taste of defeat in the Pacific and put to rest any fears of an invasion of mainland Australia. Sure, the Australians and Americans did outnumber the Japanese more than two to one, but that shouldn't detract much from the significance of this campaign. Japan was unable to accomplish their goal of isolating Australia from American support, and the Kokoda campaign was a major part of this. Japan had failed to take Port Moresby, and they would only get pushed back from this point onwards. The Australian military proved itself as a capable and effective fighting force. Before this, they played a major role in humiliating Mussolini and the Italians in Libya, then they became a thorn in Erwin Rommel's, and Germany's side, at Tobruk, and now they helped stop Japan's southward advance dead in its tracks. That only leaves me with one question. How the hell did we lose to emus?